Hi everybody, Martin back here again along with Chumley the Wonder Dog to talk to you in our second series on EV Aware and this time we're going to talk about charging your vehicle at rapid and ultra rapid. What? No mate, you are not ultra rapid. <sighs> Deluded. I'm gonna hit the road to see now I did say in the last video that we made that we would have a look at a seven kilowatt charger. They're the same as the ones on your house, but out and about. So what we've done is we've come to one of these, this little bad boy here, this is known as a pod point. Yeah, these are absolutely really, really great little charging network that pod point have got. But these are the only charges, like I say, because they're the same as you use at home, that you are going to use your own cables. And this is the last time in this video that we are going to be using our own cables because from this point on, rapid charges and ultra rapid charges, you use the ones provided with the machine okay so now we've come along to a rapid charger proper and this is an osprey 50 kilowatt charger so this is 50 kilowatts as opposed to the seven kilowatts ones that we've seen on the pod point and the ones that we've been talking about having fitted at home now a couple of things that are different about these first of all all rapid chargers are tethered and the reason that they're tethered which basically means remember you're not using your own cables as i said before that the reason that they're tethered is because they're putting 50 kilowatts in which is a lot more current than seven and naturally they need a bigger cable to make that happen now the next big difference is when you turn up to one of these you'll notice that it's got two different types of socket on it now the first one of these is known as a chadamo socket chadamo is probably one of the world's worst acronyms it stands for charge on demove i know i did warn you but nonetheless if you have a nissan leaf or a japanese car toyota mitsubishi of the like then you will expect realistically to use a chadamo socket so that's the sort of preferred socket supply in japanese manufacturers it's known as chadamo so that's one of the sockets on there now the second one if you have a european car then you're probably going to have one of these which is known as a ccs socket which stands for combined charging system and if you remember from our video from before and if you didn't see that then you can do so by just clicking on the little link that should have appeared around about there somewhere then you'll remember that this was a type 2 socket on the bottom and when we pulled the little flap out on our car then it opened it up into this sort of rapid charging ccs socket so that's kind of how it works so both of these realistically they're a little bit sort of plug and play so you just pull them out and then plug them into the car and away you go now word to the wise one thing that can make these things a little bit um, frustrating sometimes is that some of these rapid chargers if for instance hypothetically speaking you went to a charger and a nissan leaf was parked there with using its chadamo socket then you probably couldn't charge until that person had finished using theirs yeah so if you wanted to use a ccs socket whilst they're using a chadamo you probably can't you're going to have to wait for them to use they don't all work like that but it is frustrating the first time you turn up to one and think why isn't this charger working when actually all it was all the time is just somebody else is using it now how you physically get them working well they're all a little bit different there again some use an app some use a little card some use a contactless payment some use combinations of all of these things and every one of them slightly different but at the end of the day the machines are not that difficult to try and work out i'd love to be able to go into detail about how to work them all but they're all a little bit different but to be honest with you most people can get the hang of them really really straightforward now as much as that we love these things they do all have very very different charges not just in kilowatts but actually in uh, pricing too so let's have a look now at how much you can expect to pay at some of the more common charges that you're going to see out on the road
So now that we've had a look at rapid chargers, the big question is, well, what's the difference between a rapid charger and an ultra rapid charger? And the simple answer to this is, well, time, the time it takes you to physically charge it and how much it costs you to charge one up. Now, you may have asked, well, why are we not seeing one of these ultra rapid chargers? And in all honesty, we kind of already have. Every one of these charging stations, the ultra rapid ones, are basically the same as the rapid ones. They all have the same sockets, they all operate the same to start them and to stop them. But like I say, the only thing that's different is the tariff they charge to physically charge your vehicle and how long it takes to do it. So speaking of that, let's have a look now at how long it physically takes you to top up an electric vehicle. So let's start off first of all with the granny charger. Remember the granny charger we talked about a long while back in, in, in video number one? As I said to you before, very few electric vehicle drivers will ever want to use one of these. And basically the reason being for this is that in one hour of charging, you can expect to put a grand 2.2 miles worth of driving in your battery. So as we say, completely pointless. I don't know why anybody would want to use one. If we then move up to the seven kilowatt fast charges, so these are the ones that we're gonna see on the side of your house and we saw on the video uh, earlier on at the pod point destination, then in, se in one hour of, of charging on one of these, then we can expect to put around about 30 miles in the vehicle. Please bear in mind as well that the figures that we're giving here are range dependent on vehicle type, but this is a really accurate, reasonably accurate guide as to what you should get. Moving then up onto the 50 kilowatt rapid charges, and these are the ones that we've been looking at so far, along with all their associated pricing, then in one hour of charging, you can expect to put around about 130 miles on in, in the battery. As I said to you before, the rapid charges and the ultra rapid charges look really no different. They don't behave any differently, but they do cost a little bit more and they do um, take less time to do. And the easy way to remember this realistically is ultra rapid chargers come in three different sizes and it's anything higher than 50 kilowatt. So in reality, you're looking at around 100, 150 and 350 kilowatt charges. Now, in the right vehicle with the right charger, then you can expect to put somewhere in the region of around about 200 miles in the battery in one hour. So a very, very small amount of time realistically spent if you only want to put sort of 60, 70, 80 miles in the tank in this situation. So how does this all work out in terms of cost? Well, let's presume that we've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery inside our car, and that battery then yields us a range of around about 200 miles. Now to calculate this, we realistically, we divide the 50 by the 200, which gives us 0.25. So that's realistically what we've got is over 100 miles, 25 kilowatts per 100 miles. Let's then presume that our home electricity tariff is around about 23 pence per kilowatt hour. I appreciate the fact that not everybody's on this tariff, but we're just using this as a figure and you can obviously insert your own numbers into this. So all we do then is we times that 25 by the 23, which gives us £5.75 per 100 miles. Times that by two would give us the £11.50 we needed to be able to top up our vehicle to its 200 mile range. So working on this same calculation, if we wanted to do a thousand miles, then realistically we'd be looking at around about £57.50 to do that. Compare that to what that could cost you in a petrol or a diesel car, which is probably somewhere in the region upwards of around about £342. Now, obviously, we've been looking at lots of charges today and all these have a different rate. So to give you an idea, all the um, numbers that are in a different color here are in this kind of red color are what it would physically cost you to put a thousand miles into your vehicle based on the fact that you have a 50 kilowatt battery and a 200 mile range. So hopefully that's given you some idea of what it physically costs you. And I'm sure you can see from this that it is significantly less than what you would expect to pay if you were putting the same kind of mileage in with a petrol or a diesel engine vehicle. And so that's it for part two. What we'd like to do now is invite you along to come and watch part three, where we will be looking at how the different controls work in the electric vehicle, things like range anxiety, how to get the best out of your electric vehicle, and a few other bits as well for you. So until then, from myself, Martin, and from Chumley the Wonder Dog, we'd like to say goodbye. Incidentally, you do know, don't you, your dinner's out. Whoa! Wow. Boy. Seems it was ultra rapid after all. I'm gonna hit the